Good morning. Oh. Deep, deep, on this history segment, man, this was huge. What I was, I was thinking about having you come on that 8.30. I was like, no, I want to do this for the history hour. I think it's, it's uh, spot on for this. The passing of Willie Mays. Mm -hmm. The great Willie Mays. Say, hey, kid. He was just an amazing icon for baseball for a lot of reasons. How you being a baseball guy mm -hmm. as well, yeah. multi-sport athlete, what was the impact of Willie Mays? And what is Willie Mays' impact to baseball and to our world? <laughs> there's, some, there's some deep water there. Mm-hmm. Um, because Willie had to, one, he's the reason why there's West Coast baseball. Mm -hmm. If they're not a part of the move, if he's not, doesn't have the star factor and take that Giants team out of New York, mm -hmm. uh, and, and get it to San Francisco with a, with a national star, um, they missed some things. Uh, they had Orlando Cepeda, uh, uh Willie McCovey already out there, but at which were their things. But Willie coming to to from New York to San Francisco, and then leading the majors in home run three 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 years in a row out there. Mm -hmm. uh, he also was a great ambassador. The, the 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 big part of Willie was the baseball was iconic, but the person mm -hmm. was 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 even more so. Like on the Mount Rushmore of really good people, people who 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 went through some friction. Right. Um. He he went through it. Like he went through it. I mean, you talk about in, in several of the leagues that he was playing in once he got out of the Negro leagues, he was the only black person playing on the East Coast leagues. Uh, and so he took some heat. Like he took some real, like he, you talk about that Jackie Robinson heat. Willie took that heat and he took it in, in mm -hmm. such a unique way. And it is historically weird how we make our great people go through that stuff. You look at this, <laughs> DB, I want to ask you this. Being All a right. Yeah. And you look at today, we celebrate June 19th, mm -hmm. Juneteenth, as we call it, mm -hmm. 1865, when the um, obviously four years after Emancipation of Proclamation, and yet there were still folks in Galveston who were just learned they were free. Just kidding. Mm -hmm. Got the news just all those years later. And it, you look at an icon like him, you mentioned the things he endured and went through that me and you and Amon as men of color, we can't possibly fathom. Yeah. And, I... they, and they did it with so much dignity. Yeah, I mean that's Willie. That's the word that that really is kind of the word that if you're going to identify Willie. I mean, one, I, let's say this: as a baseball player, he was so much better than mm -hmm. everybody else mm -hmm. at everything. Mm -hmm. If he had decided he was going to lead the entire universe in home runs, he would have done so. Three hundred hitter, six hundred sixty home runs, no juice in 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 the vicinity, uh, great throwing arm. Um, but the people. The part that people miss the two parts. One, there's no there's no star for IQ, hmm. and mm -hmm. th this is what people miss with Willie. Willie had the biggest, had the greatest baseball IQ of any player in baseball history. Now let me let me say it again so you get you get this. Mm -hmm. Willie Mays was the smartest, had the highest IQ of any baseball mm -hmm. player ever. This was a guy that I mean, one, I mean they talk about the catch, right? And mm -hmm. everybody talks about that. athletically, he's an alien. He's an alien to run uh, on an outfield that a ball that was hit 460 feet. Most outfielders uh, in center field standing at three, 350, 360 to make that diagonal run. And then, and he, he described the play and he said, first of all, I'd be offended if any ball that was hit within the park, I didn't catch. Offended. offended. Second yeah. of all, second of all, I like that mindset. Of a ball that 99.9% .9 of outfielders would not get to. He said that in the process, halfway there, he recognizes, he says, there's two runners on, mm -hmm. and I've got to figure out a way to get this ball back. In. As he's running. Uh, no, assuming that he's going to make the, <laughs> the catch. And then said halfway through it, Right, and we see the 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 backwards back basket catch, but halfway through it, he's like, "Oh, I'm there. I just need to make sure I get the ball around." Now, mind you, he caught the ball at 460 and was still running towards Forward. the fence. Yep. Pivoted and spun. Yeah. Didn't take three steps. Mm. Took one step, pivoted, and launched a missile, an <laughs> absolute <laughs> missile, back to the relay man. And you go. He he also he told the story of they said, Well, how do you approach at the plate? And he goes, Well, they used to say that I couldn't hit the curveball. That was in my scouting report. Um, and he said, So what he would do is 
early in the count, he would poorly swing at a curveball. He would just make it look terrible. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, why'd you do that? He says, because that pitcher is going to think that I can't hit their curveball. And then <laughs> in a critical, at a two-strike count with a run on base, they're going to throw that curveball, and I'm going to put it on, up on the roof. <laughs> <laughs> and then he told the story of, they said, that he had the habit of slowing down. Uh, run or, he's on second base, base hit. He had a habit of slowing down mm -hmm. as he rounded third. They said, well, why do you do that? You make the play close when it doesn't have to be. He says, because... I need the outfielder to think he can throw me out so he'll throw to the plate and the the the, the runner on first can get to second base. Yeah. Mm, That's nice. smart. <laughs> Willie smart. was a, like he was a cheat code. Mm. <laughs> he was I mean athletically a cheat code. Mm. Cerebrally he's a cheat code. Yeah. And then the heart of an absolute king. Yeah. Who from 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 every aspect of life would share stories. I met him Man, 1993 mm -hmm. in D.C., he came through for an all-star convention. And Willie Mays sat in a booth in my bar and t held court for two hours. Mm -hmm. Of course. And to tell you that somebody cared enough about baseball and the people in it. Mm. And he would tell the story. He said, listen, my job as, as an ambassador, he goes, I have to love this thing. Mm -hmm. And then if I share how much I love it, you have to love it too. Mm. Now, who says that to a guy <laughs> that they just met? But he said, you, you have, he said, you have the eyes of a baseball fan. Mm. So I need to give you the gifts that I can give you. I'll be long gone. But you'll have these gifts, stories. right? Like, so, as you're sharing right now, right? Like you, well, but this is this is what sports does at mm -hmm. the highest level, is that it allows us to share love stories of the things we care about. That's why I was listening this morning. You and Sip talk about baseball. I watch baseball every day. As a matter of mm -hmm. fact, I watch several games a day. <laughs> um, that's just that's just how I right. process. You like I, it. well, because it, baseball. It was it was America's pastime, yeah, mm -hmm. and it was how my my stepdad shared love with me. Mm -hmm. It's how my grandfather. It's how my coaches in college mm -hmm. shared love with me. It's how people who play the game, the Dusty Bakers, and that how they share love of the game. Well, how you shared it with your players that you coached over the years. Well, th that was That's literally right. my job. That on Jackie Robinson Day. Uh, in the major leagues, wherever I was coaching, whenever I was coaching, there are several pictures online of this, that I collected official Jackie Robinson Day jerseys that were worn mm. around the Major League Baseball, and I would hang them in our dugout. Wow. Mm -hmm. Because it, it, it forced me, it forced me to tell the stories, mm -hmm. and it forced them to be curious oh, about right. it. Right. Yep. And hopefully, Willie Mays passing will remind people of what baseball can be, um, it is an it's a vehicle and an engine for fixing what ails us mm. as a country, as people. Yeah, um, that was what baseball was. United us, right? It, it, you, look, you can get together mm -hmm. for three hours at 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 a talker's pace, <laughs> right? Yeah, and share humanity at its fullest. Right, like you can. You, we talk about it. baseball is a break bread sport. Mm -hmm. Like you can sit and eat and talk and share a beverage and right. get up and meet other people mm -hmm. and meet on common ground. And in, in, in that space, baseball through the, via the Negro leagues broke down barriers mm -hmm. and it, it, it removed, it literally removed walls because right. there were sections mm -hmm. of baseball stadiums across America where black folks and white folks couldn't cross. Right. And they figured that my goodness, we're better when we're together. Mm. <laughs> we mm -hmm. really, like everything is better when we're together. Mm -hmm. And that's what baseball did. And that's what the phase was. That's what sports does. That's music when it's done well. That's right. what it does. Art mm -hmm. when, it, when it's done well, that's what it does. And then sports in this space, in the conversations that we have, the reason why this station exists, purpose one is for us to meet and love what we love together. Mm. Like we like <laughs> that's that's mm -hmm. really what it is. Like we get to come here every day from six a.m. to twelve midnight and talk about things and people that we love. Mm -hmm. Folks, DP mm -hmm. is 
gave us and shared that wisdom. I was like, I was not going to let him get out of here. So I wanted to catch him at 8.30. You're back in your office. That's when I seen you came up. I was like, no, we got to have DP, a man that um, um, that was around a lot of icons, seeing a lot of things. And just from just from life, you know, being 61 years old, there's things that you grew up and seeing that we didn't see at 50 and at 40, at 35, at, et cetera. And then being from Virginia, the Commonwealth, there's a lot more things that you saw uh, growing up, being busted to different schools, et cetera. Well, I was a part of that Alpha Project. Absolutely. Like, people, I, I, I keep telling people, I was one of the first kids. You, if you think, remember the Titans. Like, sports mm -hmm. fans will recognize that. Mm -hmm. Well, that was, that was, like, that was my people. Right. That was my Uncle Petey. Mm -hmm. That was, that was, TC was the only place I could go as a young black kid in that area and watch football, high school football on Friday night. Mm -hmm. Like, that, we understood it. And the busing project, that pulled me out of my neighborhood black school and put me on a bus to ride five miles across town to an all white school mm -hmm. where I was picketed the first three days that I, that I was there. Imagine being nine years old and being picketed mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. trying to figure out why. Yeah. Yeah. And what they told me, here's the, you, you'll, you'll, you'll get a, you'll get a kick out of this. Cause it's, it's, it's fantastic. Imagine them telling me that, telling me that, okay, because we've heard the Jackie Robinson talks, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And they said, you're going to have to be better than everybody else at everything. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to be better academically. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to be better athletically. And then you have to be better at heart mm -hmm. because there are folks here that don't want you to they succeed. Don't want you here. Mm -hmm. They don't want you here. Yeah. They don't want you to succeed. succeed. Uh -huh. And when it gets tough, understand that you have a pass and they had to set this because my police officers had to walk me from the bus to the school <laughs> just to go to school bro we talking about going to school mm, yeah. <laughs> mm, right that's, that's so heavy. in I 19 so. in 1970 that's that's i mean that's how old i am 1970 that that conversation had to happen right that listen bro you can't get mad you can't be angry you can't be volatile you mm. have to find an inner peace that's going to carry you through some really difficult times. And that's what we told a nine-year-old, bro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, <laughs> we got a lesson in psychology. We got a lesson in history. <laughs> we got a yeah. lesson in um, uh, diplomacy. Folks, the, the passing of Willie Mays, like I said, that is something. He was an ambassador, and he did it with so much dignity and so much class for 93 years. Uh, God rest his soul. Mm -hmm. And all those he impacted. I mean, we continue on, uh, regardless of background, race, et cetera, to continue to keep be that beacon of light that hey, he was today, for so long. Today, say hey. Say hey. <laughs> <laughs>